we are officially back on schedule. So my uploads are now going to be coming to you on time, right after the games occur. We're currently on a 3-0 streak, and we want to keep that going. Our next opponent in the way is JJ and his DC Umbreon. Let's look at the team. JJ has by far the most interesting team that I've seen thus far, and probably one of the bulkiest. He's got a Zygarde complete, a Solgaleo, and a Mega Metacham, and if that weren't enough, he's also got a Volcarona and a Terrakion. Terrakion is probably the biggest threat to my team of all of these, so we're going to need to bring some solid defensive options to be able to deal with it. Our squad hasn't changed at all yet, so you guys have a pretty good idea of how I'm going to be dealing with most of his offensive threats. Let's look at the team. First member I want you to pay attention to is Colossal. This Pokemon was one of my last picks in the draft. I got it specifically because I needed a good fire resist, and I didn't really have one yet. Volcarona happens to be an extremely powerful fire type, so we're going to be using Colossal to check it this week. Pretty much any physical rock type move is a big deterrent to Volcarona which is why we have Rock Tomb on here. It's also going to help me check other threats on his team that are threats because they're fast. Pokemon like Terrakion, which switches in super well to Colossal, have to risk getting their speed dropped and subsequently leave themselves open to be revenged a lot easier. We have Rapid Spin, Spikes, and Flare Blitz to round out the moveset. You'll notice as we go through the team that I actually don't have Stealth Rocks on here. That's because Volcarona, Mandibuzz, and Vikavolt are all very likely to be holding heavy duty boots. The Mons on his team that I want to chip away at, such as Mega Metacham and Zygarde and Terrakion, all resist Stealth Rocks. The last move on the set is of course Flare Blitz, it's sun boosted, it's always good to go for against things like the Vikavolt and the Roserade in case I decide to stay in, as well as of course the Solgaleo. Mainly specially defensive with a careful nature and enough speed to speed creep Vikavolt or what I think he's going to bring as speed on it if it comes. The last two things I want you to pay attention to are the ability and the item. Steam Engine makes it so that we can switch in on fire moves and go up to plus six essentially making us faster than his entire team, and the item is Leftovers. If you look at JJ's team, his only stealth rocker is Terrakion, and it's one of the most potent offensive threats in this matchup. If it comes with stealth rocks, I'm happy to take 25% on my Colossal to switch in, because that means that one of his biggest setup threats is a lot less likely to be a setup threat. Our next Mon on the team is sort of a double-edged sword. Tapu Lele is pretty much my only response to a devastatingly strong high jump kick from Mega Metacham. At least I'd be able to switch in once, maybe even twice. Of course, we're not running defensive, we're running Choice Scarf. Our three moves to attack with are going to be Moonblast, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. I considered Psyshock over Psychic because of the Sylveon, but because we're a Choice Scarf set, I don't think it's going to matter that much. And I ran some Calcs. Sylveon's more likely to be running a physically defensive set anyway, so the damage output difference is almost negligible. Our item is of course Choice Scarf, as we want to outspeed the Metacham if we do end up switching in on it. Psychic Surge is going to help mitigate things like Extreme Speed from the Zygarde, as well as Bullet Punch from the Mega Metacham itself. And the last move on the set that you see there is Aromatherapy. One of JJ's best ways to deal with my team is to spread status to pretty much everything. If I'm able to get a free turn with Lele where I can go for aromatherapy, I'll be able to get rid of really annoying Toxics and maybe even Scald Burns from the Suicune. Mega Blaziken's back again this week, and once again, it looks like it absolutely tears my opponent a new one. We have your typical Swords Dance set with Close Combat, Flare Blitz, U-Turn, and Swords Dance. Max Attack, Max Speed, I just wanted to tie the Mega Metacham. U-Turn's really nice for making sure that I'm always in with the right Mon against whatever decides to switch in on Mega Blaziken. And while I did consider a special set to be able to deal somewhat with Suicune. What I found through calcing was that plus two close combat is actually just way stronger. Nothing more to talk about with this Pokemon, let's move on to the fourth. Of course, we're bringing both our fire types with fire type stabs, so you already know we have to have Groudon on the team. But mainly Groudon's role this week is going to be to check the Zygarde and the Terrakion simultaneously. As you can see, we're Earthquake, Dragon Tail, Thunder Wave, and Bulk Up. I felt that Dragon Tail paired really well with me boosting my own defense. He doesn't have a lot on the special side that can knock out Groudon. Suicune's water moves are already weakened by the sun, so that's really not an option. So that makes it so that Roserade is kind of the only way to deal with it, and you'll see what we're using to check that in a second. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't want to waste a move slot on Stealth Rocks, 
so I really feel that Thunder Wave is the perfect last move here. Slowing down really annoying Pokemon like the Mega Metacham and the Terrakion, and even the Volcarona, is going to be really good. Of course, we're rocking Leftovers with a near max defense set. I'm just missing a little bit of HP. I decided to creep any possible creep from JJ by pouring in 12 EVs into speed. Dragapult's back again this week, guys. I can't leave this mod on the bench. It's just way too good. By the way, if you guys want to leave me some nickname suggestions in the comments down below, please do so because I've not had time to think of any nicknames for these guys. So any suggestion would be great. And while you're at it, of course, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like if you are enjoying the video and just these videos in general. Now on to the set. You can see that this Dragapult is quite a bit more defensive than what I've been bringing. It's not a choice set this time, it's just Hex, two status moves, and U-turn. We have enough speed on here to outspeed Terrakion, of course, so we're able to burn it and then Hex it on the following turn. And we have the defensive investment to be able to take Foul Plays from a Burn Mandibuzz, to be able to take Zen Headbutts from a Mega Metacham, even an Outrage from a Zygarde if it's burned is very easy for us to tank. To be frank with you, I can't exactly remember why I have the special attack in here. I know it's to two hit KO something or even three hit KO, but I'm not sure what, so don't roast me on that. The HP is a leftovers number to make sure that we're getting back the maximum amount of HP possible from the leftovers. And the rest is poured into defense with a bold nature, as you can see. Infiltrator is still the ability of choice. No kind of intimidate worries here. I didn't have really big worries about stat drops, although I probably should have considered the fact that he has a Vikavolt with Sticky Web. However, I wanted to make sure to be able to hit Will-O-Wisps behind a sub, especially on something like a Zygarde. So as you guys can see, we have a lot of really good defensive checks to stuff. We have the Colossal, we have the Groudon, we have the Dragapult, and while I do have a Setup Sweeper in Blaziken and a Scarfer in Lele, I felt like that wasn't enough. Initially, my Dragapult was going to be offensive, and I had thought up a really interesting set that I don't necessarily want to reveal just yet as it might come up that I have to use it in playoffs at some point against the same opponent. But what I did realize while going through all of my offensive options was that I had one Mon that absolutely destroyed JJ's team. I present to you Power Herb, Meteor Beam, Celesteela. So as we've already mentioned, JJ has a Volcarona. And Volcarona is going to be very hard pressed to be clicking a fire move when I have a defensive Dragapult and a Colossal in the way. Let's not even mention the Blaziken that would get a free switch in if he goes for a flamethrower out of sun. That's what makes this Celesteela so powerful. The moves we have on here are Giga Drain, specifically for the Suicune, Flash Cannon, which hits a large portion of JJ's team, and, of course, Meteor Beam. Autotomize makes sure that I'm faster than everything on JJ's team, save a Scarfer. And the initial speed investment, while it might not make sense in tandem with Autotomize, it does make sense when you look at the fact that he has a Vikavolt that I can also set up a Meteor Beam on. Beast Boost is really what makes this set so strong. Celesteela being able to go up to plus two special attack and have a move that still boosts its special attack if I get into a situation where I'm against a specially defensive Mandibuzz, for example, is absolutely insane. The only Pokemon on his team that I need to weaken to make sure that this set works is the Solgaleo. While I could have coverage for it in Flamethrower, these three moves are absolutely necessary. So I know you guys are dying to get to the battle to know if any of this shit worked, so let's jump right into it. All right, so here we are, and enough of the formalities. I'm going to stop talking like it's a script. Let's get right into the matchup analysis. You can see that JJ brought Zygarde, Solgaleo, Volcarona, Terrakion, Mega Metacham, and Mandibuzz. One of Mandibuzz or Sylveon, or even both, had to come to this matchup. Dragapult is way too big of a threat to his team. That said, Dragapult is the perfect lead here. JJ literally brought five physical attackers and a Volcarona which I have checked to a T. There is no hidden power, so Colossal is an easy switch into that thing. Now, JJ can make a very good double here and there, but it's not always gonna happen. At some point, he's gonna have to do something with the Volcarona. So as I lead Dragapult, JJ leads with Terrakion, and I'm gonna get off a of Will-O-Wisp immediately. Apparently, there's no Lumberry, and Stone Itch hits me for a measly 26%. I'm thinking that JJ is gonna switch out into Mandibuzz, so I go for another Will-O-Wisp to try to status it, but he actually gets up rocks, and this is super important. Mandibuzz is going to come in on the next turn, but let's talk about the rocks. The rocks mean that Terrakion is no longer a threat, even less so because it's burned. 
That means that my Groudon is going to be freed up to check other physical offensive threats on his team, such as the Solgaleo and the Zygarde. So I go for a Hex on the Mana Buzz this time thinking the Terrakion would stay in. It doesn't, so I go for a Will-O-Wisp and now this thing's burned. I get toxic in return, but that's fine. Two Mons on their team are burned. This Mana Buzz is pretty much weakened for the entire game, so I'm good. I go into Blaziken here on Mana Buzz's Foul Play and it actually still does 19% to me. Now, I am going to get off my Mega Evolution here, and we're just going to go for a U-turn. I didn't think that he'd stay in, but I go into Colossal here just to get rid of the rocks. Foul Play comes out, does 8%, which is nothing, and we are going to get off the Rapid Spin here as he decides to Roost. So the Mana Buzz is back to pretty good health, but we're at plus one speed now, Rockless on the field, which is great, and here I'm going to go into Celesteela, predicting another Toxic. I know that he's going to want to status my Colossal because it's a big problem for his Volcarona. Here I double into Mega Blaziken on the Solgaleo, and it ends up being Scarf. Now, I didn't really have a good switch in regardless, and I just ended up going for a U-turn. And the reason that I did that was that I didn't want this thing to be weakness policy on my Flare Blitz, and somehow be like max defense and live and get a massive boost from me attacking it with a super effective move. That said, my Blaziken is dead now. So I lost one of my biggest offensive threats, but that's okay because his biggest offensive threat to me anyway, as I saw it, Terrakion is not really here at all. So that's going to let me go Groudon here on the Solgaleo. And now here I'm going to expect the Mana Buzz to come in and I double into Lele. And now expecting the Solgaleo to come back in, I'm actually going to Shadow Ball to weaken it. We know he's Choice Scarf because I'm max speed on my Blaziken. So I know he has to attack me here with some move. I go into Colossal on Flare Blitz and I get the Steam Engine boost, which is awesome. And he also gets a little bit of recoil, which might put him into range of Shadow Ball later. I'm going to get up a spike here on the Zygarde, and that's going to be really good once the Mandibuzz is dead and can no longer defog, because he has no other hazard removal unless he decided to bring defog on Volcarona, as I believe it does get it. Now, I'm going to U-turn on the Mandibuzz switch with my Dragapult that I brought in on the Zygarde, and I'm going to go back into Lele, and this time I'm going to Moonblast. I'm not going to predict the Solgaleo, because spikes are up. So Galio comes back in after, and I get in my Groudon here as Sunsteel Strike comes out, but I am defensive. He does crit me, but it shouldn't matter in the long run. I have a really good amount of HP, so I'm fine. And here I'm going to go for an Earthquake, and we are going to knock out the best switch into my Scarfed Tapu Lele on his team. Metacham now comes out. I'm actually going to stay in here, and unfortunately, JJ misses a Zen Headbutt. Now, this is pretty big because now the Metacham only has one switch in left because the spike is up, and of course, my Groudon would be dead here. The Psychic Terrain's up. If it wasn't up, this thing wouldn't kill me. As you'll see, as the Psychic Terrain goes down this turn, Metacham goes for another Zen Headbutt and actually doesn't knock me out. So you see that I live with 20%. Now, of course, I got leftovers, so I was most likely dead to the Psychic Terrain boosted Zen Headbutt. So that really sucks for JJ. It's going to Thousand Arrows me here, and because I'm max defense, I live it, and I get to Dragon Tail out the Zygarde as well. And now Terrakion comes in. I'm assuming it's going to get up rocks, but I don't really care. I just want to get in Dragapult and click Hex at this point. It's pretty much free, and if it does end up going for close combat, which is the most likely offensive move that it would click there, then I would be immune to it obviously. So I'm going to take a crit stone edge here this time, but honestly, these crits mean nothing in comparison to that Zen headbutt miss. So like, I shouldn't feel like I got hacked because whatever I got here was way worse for him. Now, of course, I hex this Terrakion down to 1% after the burn, and I'm actually going to go for a U-turn here on the next turn, and I'm going to bring out my Celesteela directly because I know that I can check the Zygarde with my Lele and my Dragapult, and I know that if he goes Volcarona to take advantage of my Celesteela, we can get off the Meteor Beam and knock out the Volcarona in one hit, even if it Quiver Dances, and that's exactly what happens. So, Zygarde comes out next, tries to go for a Glare, but... Flash Cannon's too strong at plus two, and we're going to take another 5-0 victory over the DC Umbreon. That's two 5-0s in a row, which is huge blowout games, and that also means that your Montreal Habsols are now 4-0 in the UPA. I do remind you that this was the very first league that I was ever in. Now, credit to JJ, I think that Scarf Soul Gallio was a great bring, although I do feel like bringing an offensive Terrakion would have been way better here, something like Rock Polish Swords Dance, or even just three attacks life orb with with rock polish i feel would have done a lot more damage to my team especially with how many physical attackers you had to weaken my ground on so maybe a few missteps in prep but honestly overall 
looked like a solid bring about everything that i expected maybe the sylveon over either the volcarona or the mega metacham i'm not sure sylveon could have been pretty good here of course it had celesteela to contend with but he had no way of knowing that i was going to be an offensive celesteela obviously and mystical fire could have done a lot of damage to me with all of that said, I'd like to say GG to my opponent. He played very well and he was a good sport about everything. We discussed the miss after the game and he wasn't too upset, so I do appreciate that. And he also complimented the set, as you can see on the right, when he said hot in response to Meteor Beam Celesteela. He had no choice but to go for a Quiver Dance at that point. I'm not even sure if Flamethrower would have knocked me out from neutral. Either way, we got off the Meteor Beam and I'm really happy about that. And that's why Celesteel is in the thumbnail. Now, before we end the video, I do want to let you guys know about a transaction that's coming up for the next week before we get into the next video. I'll mention it again at the beginning of the next video just to remind you guys, but I'm dropping Scallopede. I don't like Scallopede. I've never been good at using it. That's the main reason why I don't like it. If you guys do remember, we had this awful experience with Scallopede in the GBA when we brought a horrible set for Mr. Wolfie Glick. Yeah, we're just gonna go for Throat Chop. I don't have any other move. I don't have uh, Earthquake. Yeah, don't bring Mono Throat Chop Scallopede to a matchup with a Muck, especially against the World Champion kids. But anyway, Scallopede's leaving the team and we're gonna be replacing it with another Sun Abuser. Venusaur was available. And you guys might be wondering, well, how does that equal out in points or tiers? Well, the thing is, this is a free draft. We were allowed to pick up whatever we wanted. If you haven't noticed by now, by the looks of the teams, everybody could get whatever they wanted throughout this whole draft. So we're dropping Scallopede for Venusaur, mainly because I feel that Venusaur can be a really good defensive option while also being a sick Sun Sweeper, obviously. With access to Weather Ball and Earth Power now and the lack of hidden power in the metagame, I feel like a grass type that can hit other grass types and steel types that hard is really invaluable. And the defensive options with Sleep Powder and Leech Seed are also really strong. So now you know that if you guys are going to be giving me nicknames for Pokemon, I no longer have a Scallopede. We now have Venusaur. Speaking of which, make sure to leave comments down below for me. I haven't been seeing a lot of comments on these videos. What I have seen has been very kind, obviously. You guys are great. Thanks for welcoming me back to uploading and as well as complimenting my editing. A lot of time does go into making these videos look semi-decent and interesting enough for you guys to keep watching. So I do miss you guys and there are a lot of you subscribed. So whoever's watching these videos, please let me know that you're here at the very least. I really do appreciate it either way, guys. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys for week five. See ya.